Hey there, so today we have another review. This is a beer courtesy of Phil, thank you so much. A beer from Fox Farm, and this one I'm really excited for. I saved the best one for the last, hopefully. This one is Quiet Night Czech Style Dark Lager. So this is a um, Czerny. Uh, commercial examples, if we go to the Czech Republic, I mean, the famous one is Uflakus, the Flakuski, uh, Tamave, 13 Plato, I think. Well, I actually went to Ufleko when I was like 19, when I was studying abroad, and I got to try that beer. Don't remember it all. But I do remember the ones that I really like, like Krusevice Czerny, uh, Kozel. Um, I mean, obviously we're drinking tons of like, you know, Gambrinos and Pilsner and Quell and all those other, but um, Crucivice. Crucivice Cherny. You can find Crucivice Cherny. I, I don't find it here, but I remember having it in New York and that's a fantastic beer. I reviewed it like years and years ago, but that's, uh, yeah, these beers are great. Um, what they are, uh, they're sort of like in somewhere in between like a Munich Dunkel and a Schwarz beer, but they have like more rounded malt character, less of the sharp Germany thing that like, you know, sort of the difference that you get from like Czech Pilsner to uh, German Pils. Um, more rounded character, probably a little bit more uh, uh, like sort of round, rounded uh, water profile uh, water, and softer water profile. And then also maybe um, sort of a less attenuation possibly, and like a little bit gentle on the roast, but those beers are very gentle on the roast qualities too. Uh, this has to be one of the highest rated um, in the dark lager camp, because it's, I was just looking up at what it is. Like they, they're offering some descriptors and um, this has like a 414, which is like insane. A for lager, B for dark lager. Um, so like, uh, yeah, aren't too many brewers making this kind of beer and um, especially outside of the Czech Republic. But um, very curious. So, beer comes in a really wonderful. This is definitely on the darker end. I think the style goes at. Let me just look it up. Jeez, um, eighteen to thirty-five SRM. This is on definitely on the darker side. I mean, this is a full-on dark brown. I mean, uh, looking far away, you would have guessed it was black. I mean, thirty-five is basically black. Um, super, super, super dark. Right, like at least for the style. You can see a little bit of brown on the edge just right over there. Wonderful cola, kind of like a tan head, even probably a little bit darker than that. Appearance-wise, looks like a. Pretty nice kind of porter, or American porter, or like a lighter kind of stout, yeah. Mmm, it's on the nose, that's cocoa. Um, it's got like a cola note, it's got um, not, not only Coca-Cola, but also like the spiciness of Coca-Cola, but also the, um, uh, what is it? It's like cocoa powder, like dusted cocoa powder. Tons of that. A little bit of like raisiny character too, along with that kind of, um, not as unctuous as a brownie, but like brownie skin. I don't know how you smell brownie skin, but like the flavor of brownie skin tastes different than eating into, chewing into uh, the flavor of a full on brownie. That's the scriptures we have sometimes. Um, a little bit of like um, uh, grape pumice too. Like, hmm. Cheers. There you go. Um, this. I find maybe it's a little bit more, then again, it's been a really long time since I had one of the Czech uh, commercial examples, but this to me possibly has a little bit more how to roast character than the uh, traditional versions. Yeah, probably just a little bit, but um, man, is that tasty. The spirit sits in at five, three, super sessionable, super tasty, uh, wonderful lingering complexity on this guy. Up front, you're hit with this kind of, um, really kind of like, Paled. Mm. How do I describe the pale flavor here? It's like bready. It's first off, it's a little bit watery in, in, in a good way. There's like a like a, a middle hollowness to this beer that some some people find to be lacking complexity. For me, it makes the beer more drinkable because if you had a full on palate experience, you'd probably want something more like like Imperial Stout, Baltic Porter, right? Something really rich here. There's like a little bit nice wateriness in the middle of that um, helps the beer's drinkability. As for the malt character, um, it's got this like, a, like light biscuit note that's quite pleasant, lightly toasted biscuit, along with just like a medium toasted breadiness. That's that, the pale character that's hitting up on the palate. And so that's the first initial impression or the first initial note that sort of like uh, lays a, a canvas for the beer. But man, there's so much more going on. They call raisin on their website. I can sort of see that. For me, it's it's a smokiness. Um, I think full wine, some people might guess this is some kind of smoke beer. Um, there's a little, there's just, there's just this ashiness that's 
I mean, obviously you'd be wrong to call it smoke beer. I don't think it necessarily, I mean, the smokiness is ever there though. It's this like, just like, like puffs of smoke that sort of come in. It's got this like, um, almost leaning towards like a little bit acrid, has a little bit of those uh, smoky notes that I get in Isla Whiskey, but like, again, the, the, the faint characteristics of it without the intensity. I get definitely get the dark fruit now. So I can see raisin, I see some prune, dried plums, um, and then it hits with this like ashy burnt note. It almost, it honestly has a little bit of characteristic, that's a, a, another a good analogy you could think of, of um, something like Irish out. There is this like almost like black patent kind of just like burnt flavor that sits on the back end, almost rubbery, almost not quite iodine, um, but it's it, it's definitely a little bit burnt. Um, sort of like the the best way to have some pizza or uh, certain sandwiches is just to have a little bit of that black right on the edge to offer a little bit more complexity, right? Um, honestly, like the bottom the the leopard spotting char of a really nicely cooked pizza is a really good analogy. Like it's not detracting to the experience, but does echo more complexity. Mm -hmm. A little bit cigar-y too. That's the only ashiness is, is what I got. Um, so yeah, honestly, I think that flavor is slightly tuned a little too high, but other than that, man, this beer has got really wonderful drinkability to it. Um, again, just like the uh, Czech lager, uh, really nice and rounded. Doesn't have the sharpness um, that you get from something like Schwarzbier. And then maybe a little bit more sweetness compared to a Munich Dunkel, but I don't think you'd be too off calling this Munich Dunkel and, you know, people, people can um, mix up styles all the time. So, um, what do I say about beer? Really nice. Um, it's a lot of wonderful complexity to it. Um, it does make me definitely want to look for a Czech example of Czech uh, dark lager. I don't know if I can find one. I don't think I can get Kozel or Kusevice Jardine down here. But if I can find something, I'll try. <laughs> uh, and also probably reminds me, I should probably drink some Munich Dunkel sometimes. I haven't had any in a long time. So very tasty stuff. Is it as transcendent as their Pilsner? I sort of like their Pilsner more. Very tasty though. That's just as good, honestly. But uh, let's go with a 93. 93, that is quite night. Fantastic. Uh, more breweries. You do dark lager. Um, I honestly think I see a little bit more. I think uh, KCBC, I just saw did it, and then Sideward down here has like a metal theme, dark lager, yeah. Dark lager is pretty tasty. And again, being a young, nine, I, was, I guess I was 18 turned 19 while I was studying abroad. Um, the one that really impressed me was like not having my first Pilsner Club, but that Crucivice Journey that was just so good, so good. And drank that in Colza all the time. But then again, yeah, so. Uh, until next time guys, cheers, uh, thanks for sharing. <laughs> sitting for some uh, shared experiences and some long stories, but this is absolutely fantastic. 93, thank you so much, Phil. Until next time, cheers.